All right, I'm putting a 1949-ish um, Dodge truck body onto a 1995 Dodge Dakota chassis. And one of the things I'm trying to do is reuse as much of the Dakota as I can, kind of for reliability and just to make it a lot more fun to drive and just make people scratch their heads. Now, one of the things I wanted to do was add the delay wiper motors, the electric wiper motors, to the 49 Dodge. Uh, if you look under the hood, I'm using the firewall floor panel, that stuff off the Dakota, and that's the Dakota wiper motor mounted in its original location. Uh, the 49 Dodge, however, has uh, a center mounted vacuum wiper motor mounted up underneath of the dash, underneath that little air intake. And the wiper motors you can see are center, uh, wiper pivots are center mounted. So they kind of do this number back and forth um, in what people call crab claw. Um, the Dakota, of course, had what my Tundra has, which is wiper pivots mounted on the driver's side right near the A pillar and then the center mounted post. Of course, the motor cranks around in a continuous direction and the vacuum wiper motor which I've conveniently removed does this sort of number up underneath the dash just kinda goes back and forth in this I call it, you know, rocker motion so as the vacuum pulls on this thing there's a little valve that somehow makes it pivot back and forth like that so trying to adapt all those wiper linkages and things like that together I was scratching my head for about literally about six months trying to figure out how to make all this work together without spending a whole lot of money because um, I'm a cheap son of a gun. At any rate, um, this is the answer to my problem. Just a cardboard box and a bunch of coffee stirrers. <laughs> and what I ended up doing is, um, this is actually looking at it from the, uh, you know, from the orientation of the, say the, uh, now you're say sitting in the driver's seat this would be the crank arm on the back of the wiper motor, uh, the Dakota wiper motor. I mounted another pivot up underneath of the uh, instrument cluster and just above like the clutch pedal and then that pushes a rod over to this center uh, and this is the part that was driving me crazy. So what I decided I was going to use was this is actually out of a Dodge Caravan Plymouth Voyager minivan uh, my brother just happened to be conveniently pin uh, parting one out, so he let me have whatever I wanted off of it. Uh, I'm not using the Dakota one because the Dakota, uh, these are kind of S-shaped on the Dakota, whereas on the minivan they're flat and made it a little bit easier to make a linkage, and here's why. The center pivot on that, let me, let me show you how it basically works for the moment. If you turn the motor on, that pivot up underneath the dash on the uh, driver's side above the clutch pedal is mounted to the firewall and just like a dummy pivot I used one of the Dakota pivots mounted kind of like that no, I'm sorry it's actually mounted that way so that the uh, bolts go through at any rate uh, I'll put some pictures on the build thread but then that pushes and pulls and it pivots on that center red mark and pushes and pulls the arms so they can still do that kind of crab claw motion now this drove me nuts for a while because I was trying to figure out how to get to translate a continuous round and round motion to that this rocker back and forth motion. So after sitting there watching a movie one night and a whole bunch of push pins and a whole bunch of soda uh, coffee stirrers, this is how we're going to do it. So once we get that, we're going to mount this up underneath the dash in place of the vacuum motor. It's going to be relatively like this. Uh, in that direction. So this will be pointing out towards the, the gauges, towards the passengers. Um, the center pivot is going to be mounted so it takes the place of that center pivot. And I'm going to make a little arm to come off of there. Um, I'm a fan of metric, so it's 20 millimeters from here to here, from the center to the pivot, center to pivot, 20 millimeters. So I'm going to make a little pivot to replicate that, man, I'm just cutting that one off and welding it right to that, and so that's the center pivot, which will be those two pins there. So as that goes back and forth, so as the motor goes around, this arm is going to be connected to the long one of the Dakota or minivan, doesn't really matter, 
because I'm going to cut them and shorten them and lengthen them and whatever to make it work. But uh, the length really doesn't matter as long as you locate the pivot in a convenient spot. And I had to shorten the crank. This would be this crank here. I'd actually shorten it. I ground it so it would bend a little bit easier. And uh, just kind of put it in the vise and uh, shortened it. And then tomorrow what I'm going to do is um, uh, fill that with a little bit of a just a nice little fillet weld just to strengthen it. Doubt it would break even with that because there's really not that much stress on these things. They're really super easy to push and pull, but I figured, you know, just wouldn't hurt a thing to throw a little uh, fillet weld across that. Again, take this little plate off probably and just stick it to there so the center point is there. Let's replicate that. The next thing you know, you got the round and round motion converted to a push and pull motion. But you can infer whatever you want from that. But uh, I know they do make a kit to replace this vacuum motor with an electric motor, but it's like 300 bucks. So with about a dollar's worth of coffee stirs and push pins and using your head, you can save yourself about 300 bucks. Good luck.